It's been about a month since I've gotten my hands on the AirPods Max, and I don't think that I've ever been more torn at an Apple product as I have with these $550 headphones. On one hand, I wanna criticize them for costing so much and for the inherent flaws that they have for the price, which I will do some of in this review, but on the other hand, I really like them even though I didn't want to, and they have some massive advantages compared to most headphones on the market. What makes it even worse is that I've gone to Apple's website a few times planning to hit that return button, which is still an option thanks to the holidays, but every time that I did, I couldn't get myself to go through with it, even though I wanted to, and that's because of two separate, very real world reasons that separate these from the other three pairs of headphones that I own and use. I have two more days to return them, and thankfully, I've finally made up my mind. So in this review, I will share both what really surprised me using these in the last month, as well as what has been really frustrating, and ultimately, if I'm gonna be keeping them, and how I made that choice. Let me start out by saying that nobody really needs $550 headphones, just like they don't need fancy watches or clothes. You can get great noise canceling for half the price or better sound quality for much less, and even exclusives like spatial audio or Siri announced messages with in-ear AirPods. And that's where my AirPods Max journey started, knowing that I don't really need heavy, fancy aluminum and stainless steel headphones that are a pain to lug around, where my AirPod Pros can do most things that these can, and for the few things that they lack, such as latency-free video editing, I have my Audio-Technicas, and for the now rare flights I take, the Sony XM3s. With that preconception, I opened up the box for the first time, and I was almost stunned for a few reasons. First, the kind of ugly, simple design looked much nicer and actually classy in person, and the weight that I read on the spec sheet was much more real once you got them in your hand. All of the materials felt very premium as I had expected, and the headband was super soft and stretchy while not feeling thin or fragile. The first time I put them on, I was surprised by how little I felt that headband, but the clamping pressure from the ear cups were concerning since these really try to keep a good seal for the active noise cancellation and to balance the hefty weight on your head. Now I rarely wear headphones for more than two hours because they end up being too uncomfortable to keep using. Usually I get pain built up right where the headband is and my ears start to get quite hot, so I have to take them off at least for a half hour to take a break or switch to earbuds or my studio monitors. Well, after two hours of straight use, I was really surprised by how little changed from the time I put them on. The headband still felt like it wasn't there, which is crazy, and my ears felt just as cool as when I put them on, and the clamping pressure didn't feel any stronger, although it never really disappeared like it does with the Sonys. I continued to wear them throughout the day, only taking them off for about 10 minutes, and after over eight hours of use, I was shocked that they felt almost as comfortable as when I put them on, only feeling slightly more pressure from the headband and the ear cups closer to that eight hour mark. And I could probably wear them for at least 12, if not more hours without an issue. This was shocking to me since I don't think I've ever been able to wear headphones for more than say three hours. So if you're somebody that hasn't been able to either and you want to, Apple killed the comfort on these things despite them weighing so much. Now let's talk about an issue that has been making some headlines and that's condensation. Dylan Philemon shared a massive amount of condensation he was seeing in his AirPods Max after extended use, which was quite scary. Dylan later posted that he was wearing them for 12 hours straight, which once again says something about comfort, and in a cold room, and with that, I'm guessing that he has really warm ears as well. I tested this myself in multiple environments, and I literally never had an issue after extended use, and even when I was doing some walking outside, which causes the metal ear cups to get cold, while it's hot or at least warm on the inside. Now, other people have posted that they've seen a little bit, but nothing close to that. But this definitely could be an issue. Maybe that's why Apple made it so easy to remove the ear cups. And who knows, maybe other headphones can also build up condensation 
condensation too. We just can't see it with their sealed ear cups and usually a nice covering over the drivers. I personally would suggest that anybody who is spending this much money on headphones to go ahead and add on Apple Care, which is reasonably priced, not only to protect from this kind of issue, but also to protect from other things that could go wrong, such as battery longevity. Speaking of battery, both the battery life and charging has been better than I expected. If you haven't heard, the AirPods Max do go into low power mode after them just laying there for five minutes compared to instantly if you put them in their case, which is actually pretty good, but as far as their deep sleep mode, it takes about 72 hours outside of the case instead of 18 hours. I've been mostly using the Max without the case and they seem to only lose about 5% of their battery just sitting there for about a day, which isn't bad at all. And when they do go into the deep sleep mode, it's more like 2% a day. As far as battery life while in use, I did multiple controlled tests and I was surprised to find that they drained about 4% an hour when listening to music and 90% volume and it didn't make a difference if it was set to active noise cancellation, transparency mode, or even just in the off mode. This might be because the dual 10 core processors are constantly working and monitoring and then processing the audio to make sure that there's no distortion and that it sounds its best for your ears and fit. And that is likely why Apple didn't give a battery life rating without noise cancellation. During my full day test, the AirPods Max were at 67% battery life after over eight hours of use, which lines right up to about 4% an hour, giving us a rough estimate of about 24 hours of battery life, beating out Apple's 20 hour claims. But I didn't stop there. I closely monitored the battery life as it reached 1% and set a timer to see how long they would last since iPhones seem to last quite a while at 1% to give you enough time to find a charger. The AirPods Max ended up lasting over an hour at 1% charge before shutting off, whereas typically 1% would give you 15 minutes of listening. And the weird thing was that the next morning I put them back on and they turned on and gave me another 15 minutes of listening before they once again died, meaning we should have about 25 hours of real world battery life, whereas the Sony XM4s that are rated for 30 hours with active noise cancellation in lab testing lasted just under 20 hours. Once they were fully drained, I wanted to do some detailed charging tests, but first I plugged in the $35 Lightning to 3.5 millimeter connector to see if they would work when drained, and nope, they didn't. It's a good thing that they charge quickly with Apple quoting one and a half hours of playback in just five minutes of charge. And I believe it because after five minutes of me plugging them in, they were at 2% battery, matching up perfectly with how fast they drained. After 10 minutes, the headphones were at 10% and then after 30 minutes at 44%. So a half hour charge will get you over 10 hours of use. At the one hour mark, the headphones were at 70% and to get to 90%, it takes about an hour and 35 five minutes. Now what's interesting is that once they hit 90% charge, they stop charging and just sit there for a long while, even though there is no optimized charging toggle. So it definitely seems like Apple is trying to maintain battery longevity. What's even more interesting is how little power they use when charging. I tested them when they were at 1% and they only pulled 2.4 watts from either an old 5 watt brick and old cable or the new 20 watt USB-C power adapter and then included USB-C cable. So if you charge them from your laptop or power bank, barely any power is needed. That 2.4 watt draw is maintained until they reach 50% at just over a half hour, and then it drops to 1.8 watts until 70% charge. From 70 to 80%, the AirPods Max only draws 0.8 watts, and from 80 to 85, it's 0.4. And then from 85 to 90, they trickle charge, going from zero watts to 0.2 and back and forth. So Apple is being very conservative, even more so than when charging iPhones to make sure the battery lasts a long time. Now, as far as usability, I only have one complaint, but first let's talk about the good. 
I absolutely love the controls. Not only do they feel nicer and more tactile than any I've ever used in the past, but they work so well. The digital crown is awesome for adjusting volume, for pausing and changing tracks, and the headband is very easy to adjust and it stays exactly how you set it. I also like that the lightning port is on the right hand side since my speaker headphone output is on the right side as well, as are all of the current MacBooks. The smart case is still dumb and ugly, but it has been fine the time that I have used it, and yes, it doesn't protect the headphones very well, but over the last month of use, they still look like they're brand new without any marks or scratches where the cans hit each other. The only thing that I wish is for the cans to fold in like many others do so I could pack them down smaller for travel, which hopefully the rumored sport versions will have. Before I get into sound quality, I want to quickly touch on active noise cancellation and transparency. It's incredible. The transparency mode is so far better than anything else out there. It's so good that I've literally forgotten that I've had these headphones on while having a conversation just to realize it after. It is 99% true to live. Absolutely awesome. The active noise cancellation is also top notch, beating out the Bose 700s and the Sony XM4s that I tested side by side. I've worn them in a variety of loud situations and they do a shockingly good job at canceling out both low and high frequency sounds. When I first got them, I wore them as I was getting into my truck and I started it and then a few seconds later I tried to start my truck again because I literally didn't hear the rumble from the VA engine at all, which was crazy. So if if you want good active noise cancellation, you definitely won't be disappointed. And now let's talk about sound quality. I have to say that I am not a crazy audiophile, but I have opted to pay thousands more to upgrade my sound systems in my vehicles, and I have had some really nice surround sound systems that cost more than the rest of my media system combined, so I definitely appreciate good sound. The AirPods Max sound fantastic and absolutely smoke their less expensive noise canceling competition. Now, do they sound as good as $500 wired headphones that need dedicated multi-hundred dollar amplifiers? and lack any sort of smart features? Well, actually, they might, and let me explain. These headphones are very well balanced, and Apple wants to keep it that way without giving you any way to control it with an EQ control like many of the competitors do. Now, many audiophiles want brighter and more detailed highs, which I can understand, and I went ahead and went into the headphone accommodations and adjusted them to do so, like Quinn showed in his review, and I did like it for many songs, but with other tracks, the high frequencies were just too sharp, so I had to keep going back and forth and toggling this setting. Personally, I'm somebody that loves bass and I found it a bit lacking in many songs compared to other headphones, although the bass is very tight and accurate compared to the Boomi XM4s, so I adjusted the equalizer in the Spotify app, which helped out in some songs, but it ended up being a bit too much in others. After about a week, I turned everything off and set it back to normal, and I've been enjoying them this way ever since, and I've come to realize that even though these are somewhat colored, overall they are much more balanced than other mainstream headphones, and the songs where bass is lacking, that's how the artist intended it, unlike the Sonys, which give bass to pretty much all songs. And the songs where the highs seem subdued are actually supposed to be like that instead of being sharp all around. One area that has absolutely shocked me is sub bass and soundstage. I have 19 speakers, which includes a few subs in my truck, and it sounds super good, but I am hearing and feeling bass in songs with the AirPods Max that I have never heard before. Let me tell you that it is really weird to feel the headphones vibrate my head and my ears instead of just hearing bass, and this is something thing that no other headphones I've used can touch. And high-end open back headphones that have insane clarity can't offer this, at least as far as I know or have heard, which is why I mentioned that these might actually sound better for some users if you want to have good bass, good highs, and especially that sub bass. This also translates to watching movies using spatial audio. The surround sound works fairly well and the effect is cool, 
but having that sub bass that is usable down to 25 hertz can match or even beat out many surround sound systems, and that is amazing. That, combined with the excellent sound stage that matches many open back headphones in their price range without having that sound leakage is awesome. And that smokes the cheaper competitors, and then adding in the fantastic instrument separation leads to such a great audio experience. You take the really good audio experience and then you add in all the conveniences of Bluetooth headphones and the iOS ecosystem goodies like Hey Siri, auto text readings and replyings, iCloud pairing and near instant switching depending on which device you're using when you put them on, and you have a real winner for those that want active noise cancellation, having the conveniences, and can't afford the price. When I first heard that these are gonna be $550, I thought Apple was just being Apple and going for a cash grab, but after about a month with these, I can see why they've priced these this high, and if you value what Apple is offering, the price is justifiable. But still, even though I believe that these are worth the price tag, that is still larger than what I would wanna pay for headphones. And even though they are fantastic, I can't use them all the time like I can with my AirPod Pros, which are all also very good and cost less than half the price. So I was tempted to return them, but I can't get myself to do so because in the times that I can use them, they work so well and they sound so good that it is worth keeping these. My only wish is that I could use them while I'm working out, which I can't because they are way too heavy and move around too much and I wish that they could fold up so I could take them with me more often. And then of course, if the price tag was a bit lower, that would be great, even if that meant having to use plastic instead of aluminum and stainless steel. I think the AirPods Sport could offer all of that, and if they could maintain the noise cancellation and the sound quality, or at least be very close, those are gonna be an absolute steal at the rumored $350 price tag. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on the AirPods Max. I will have a link down in the video description to them if you wanna pick them up. Click that circle above if you guys wanna subscribe and see more videos. And if you wanna see some comparisons with the Sonys or the Bose, very detailed ones, we have them right over there. Thank you guys for watching, this has been Max, and I'll catch you in the next video.